All right, I'm going to see if Gemini rising and sun. So this Aries eclipse, solar eclipse is happening on the 8th in your 11th house. So let's get into it. I do want to start off instead of the eclipse, I want to start off with the fact that it is conjunct Mercury retrograde in Aries. The reason I bring this up first is because Mercury is your planetary ruler and it being next to the eclipse and being retrograde is a big sign for you. So first of all, being in Aries, all of us are kind of coming into the question of who am I? And that's what this eclipse has to deal with to some extent. But especially for you guys with Mercury retrograding in the Aries sign, which is all about the identity, self-perception, the I am statement. And I think whenever a planet like Mercury goes retrograde, it asks us to kind of go back to the drawing board and look at that a little bit more clearly. How do we identify? What have we, I guess, like labeled ourselves as? Or is there more clarity that we can bring to the holistic picture of ourselves? Um, maybe there's things that we want to start doing that will change our self-concept. Maybe there's things that we become aware of in terms of our past or um, our behavior that we then have other categories or labels or ways of kind of understanding and identifying as a person. Um, so I really feel like many of us are going to be going through a transformation of the self and asking ourselves, who am I really though? And with this human cell, it's like getting down to the core of what makes us us um, what is our truth? What is our value? What is our belief in something? Um, maybe even this last eclipse, I feel like could have us kind of questioning what other people think of us or what, um, who we are in relation to other people. And this is our time to stand on our own two feet and get really clear about our self-concept when everything is pared down and we're just looking at ourselves in the core of who we are and canceling out all of the noises um, from external voices. And it's interesting because I also pulled the animal card, which I feel like really suits an eclipse in Aries. Aries is ruled by Mars. Mars is the animal instinct. It's a part of us that is wild, that is um, defends ourself, that does what it wants when it wants. It's uninhibited. It's unrefined. And I think it could be very helpful at this eclipse to look at what's happening to your natal Mars, if there is anything aspecting it. Um, it might be trying to draw out a specific story around that. But for many of us, it's a time of embodying more of this kind of animalistic Mars instinct. And with this being in your 11th house, the 11th house is quite planned. The 11th house has longevity to it. It is also influenced by society and um, the, you know, the friendships that we have, the groups that we are a part of. So there's a sense of things being a little bit more influenced and controlled and defined that can often come with the 11th house, even though in modern astrology, they do link it with Aquarius, which is again, progressive, but there's a nature of it to be future, future forward, uh, future thinking, but it can still be defined and influenced by those around it to a, a strong degree. Um, and so I feel like there's part of this where the animal card is asking us with this eclipse in the 11th house to really trust our instinct about how to move forward with something long term or what the future wants for us in the long term. And this is even more emphasized because Mars, the ruler of this eclipse, is sitting next to Saturn in your 10th house, which is all about our careers and our goals and long term thinking, especially with Saturn involved. And so I think for many of us, we're needing to, again, trust this kind of instinctual pull of acting without overthinking things. We're acting in terms of our own independent self and not allowing ourselves to become swayed by societal expectations, by group expectations, by friends, by opinions, um, even by mentors or people above us who above us or who are more advanced than us like there's some level of credibility that we should obviously listen to them but then I think it's also going to be important for 
this time with this animal energy to realize that we have our own unique way of expressing ourselves. We have our own unique vision and to trust, again, your own instinct without letting every anything else kind of get in the way. If something feels like it's the right step for you now and for the long term, uh, lean into that. Again, even if that means going against what others have to say or societal pressures. And this eclipse is conjunct Chiron. So it can definitely bring up insecurities around really trusting ourselves and really feeling confident in our decisions and confident to stand alone and move forward on something even when maybe there's, um, again, pushback or if it feels scary to go off and do something on your own or do something different, like a lot of those fears and and, and wounds or insecurities can come up around making these kind of big future decisions and trusting something that maybe comes from deep within the self and is not necessarily validated by everyone around you or, um, or whatever. Um, So I think that this eclipse is really trying to have us face and um, yeah, just like he- deal with these things head on. And I think one of the things that can come up sometimes with this is when we have tried to do something like this before and it failed. And that's a very like five of cups experience and Chiron experience where things from the past that have hurt us come back up to the surface and make us question whether we're making the right decision. So this five of cups next to the chariot, I think is saying that there could be things in our lives that have led us to a disappointment that have led us towards a dead end or where we felt like with the five of cups, just let down to some extent around the situation. And with it being next to the chariot, it's saying to kind of pick yourself up and move forward anyway, or not to look back on the past and worry about those past things, but to move forward with confidence and trusting your own willpower, trusting your own intelligence, trusting your own gut instincts, leaning into those and running forward with that. And so if there is some level of something in your life that has been a letdown, don't let that get in the way of your progress because that is the past. And I think that this is our time to make our peace with the past, especially because Mars and Saturn being together very much can bring up stuff from the past. Um, So it's like, no, I just, I want to put that to rest. I want to feel confident. I don't want to be haunted by this experience forever. And so I think that that's a big part of what this eclipse is about. I think also we can make some really big strides within our careers and our goals if we do trust our instinct and also paired with wisdom with reason based off of these past experiences that we've gone through so we're not just taking a leap we're not just being Aries and animalistic although that's a big part of this but we're also backing this up with you know doing our own research making sure that we have kind of validated um what our instinct is telling us against some level of logic. And that doesn't have to be the case for everything, but we don't want to go 100% animal and then just everything is intuition. Everything is, um, you know, just dive right in. Don't don't think twice because there could be some element here around, um, you know, really using the wisdom of our past experiences or of those around us. So the right integration of that is key, but not letting that dissuade us if we have a strong gut instinct to do something else differently or to move in a different way. Um, Or at the very least to just like, yeah, not letting that get in the way of our confidence, you know, where we feel like, oh, well, this person has more experience and this person's wiser and this person's been further. It's like not letting that get in the way of your own confidence and what you have to offer just because you have a great instinct about whatever this is that you're wanting to to move forward with. Um, so yeah, it's like really making the plan and trusting our own intuition and even spiritual synchronicities and guidance to that this will all unfold and that we're going to do really great and we don't have to worry about our ourselves. Like we can really trust that this big endeavor or this next new thing that we've never tried before, that we're going to excel at it and that we're divinely supported and guided because Mars is in Pisces, which is very much connected to the divine. So there's some level here where it's about flowing, it's about trusting, it's about listening to those signs and synchronicities, following your gut, and then having a plan, but also releasing that level of control over that plan because things 
don't always have to go according to plan and they can turn out even better. We also have uh, Venus conjunct Neptune in the 11th house opposite Black Moon Lilith in the 5th. So I think we're going to have to be aware of over idealizing some of these things. Um, and this could be friends, this could be goals, this could be you know, realities and things that we're trying to reach for. But whatever it is, it's like we don't want to lose ourselves in this without being really grounded. And I think Mars being next to Saturn can help us with this. I think that sometimes with this page of wands, it's like we can jump headfirst into something or we can um, feel like something is going to be like this is a very free spirited energy. So it's almost like when somebody decides to travel and they're like, this is, this is the best. Like, this is how life should be every day. I'm on this trip. I'm on this island and I'm drinking a latte or whatever, whatever. Um, but that's not reality and we can't live our life 100% as a vacation. And if we did, it would also start to feel like not as good as it normally does when you're on vacation because it's, there's something a about that being an ideal experience and being different. And so um, we can't hold on to like this ideal perfect experience permanently. And so I think that that's also something to note here is that there's going to be kind of like ups and downs in this journey and we might be divinely guided. There might be lots of signs that we're doing the right thing that we can trust our gut, but that we shouldn't get like too optimistic or too idealistic about this path because we will still encounter the the things that challenge us we will still encounter um problems wherever we go and so that that sometimes happens with venus and neptune especially being the 11th house very future oriented it's like we can feel like the future is going to be this perfect place or that this is the perfect goal or that we're not going to have any issues and then the reality is that we are going to have to, we're going to meet some resistance somewhere along the way and I think um kind of grounding ourselves into the Saturn energy of what does this really take to keep moving forward can I commit and I have this emperor energy can I um, stay stable can I create the resources to help move myself forward um kind of stay true to the course have my plan be in control over things and myself so that when I do meet some level of resistance or some hardship that it doesn't derail me because I didn't expect it to be perfect. I, in fact, was planned and prepared for things to be different than I uh, hoped, I guess. I also pulled the Hierophant card and I think this really speaks to the Saturn being in the 10th house and Mars, the ruler of this eclipse, being next to Saturn. There's really this heavy focus on um, like the Hierophant is like a lot about like following the rules, uh, following traditions. And I feel like it's not saying that you have to follow the rules per se, but I, the vibe that I'm getting from this Hierophant card is yes, trust your instinct, even if that means to do things differently. But I think what it's trying to say also is even if you trust your instinct, don't throw out reason, which is what I was trying to say before. Listen to your elders and integrate and check that in integrate to some extent like check it check your own heart and intuition according to that and then make those decisions but even more importantly this higher front card I think is really speaking to doing everything one step at a time and that's the thing with Aries is it can get really ahead of itself to the point where its own feet fly over its head and they fall down so it's like if you're running down a hill and you got you go too fast like you could fall you could flip um so there's a sense here that we don't want to get ahead of ourselves that we want to pace ourselves that we want to honor the essence of time and of how things should naturally mature naturally grow not rush things not feel impatient or not feel like because we have this idea and we're passionate about it and we're following our instincts that it should just happen like that. It's like recognizing that there is going to be some sense of struggle or some resistance or some time that it takes to harden us, to help us become disciplined, to help us become better at what we do, um, to really make sure that we're well suited and can naturally progress upwards and take on more responsibility and take on more of uh, authority in a role. But we can't jump to that. We can't just automatically have that wisdom. It has to be slowly gained over time. Um, and I think this higher font card is really saying 
pace yourself and have respect also for um, your own instinct, but also like where others have their wisdom and their experience as well. Not letting that override yours, but paying credence to it because there is something valid within that that you can definitely learn from. So that's what I'm seeing for you, Gemini. If that resonates, I would love to hear from you down in the comment box below. Um, if you have anything that you want to add around your personal experience with this eclipse, I'd really love to hear it. Remember that it does take six months for eclipses to fully kind of come full circle, but you'll get little signs around what they could mean at this time. Um, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share with your friends. And if you want a reading from me, you can check that out in my description box down below, Cosmic Clarity Astrology. And I hope that you guys have a beautiful day. Bye.